And as Gridman now belonging to a titular franchise, we cannot mention Gridman without mentioning Dino Xenon, which I did a separate review on, and what is a giant robot if they can't dismember one another, unless you're a Gundam. Shall we take a look? Because I'm dreading it. And here's the newly Christian Rogue Kaiser Gritman in his full glory as the main body that composed Dino Xenon is recycled as portrayed through the legs composed of Dino Diver, the arms composed of Dino Speeder, and the torso being composed of Dino Wing, but replaced Dino Soldier with Ultimate Gritman and a sprinkle of Goldburn throughout, and here stands Rogue Kaiser Gritman, and I have to say that this beauty here stands tall and proud over his predecessors, as the enhanced sculpt and added color schematic puts it over the awesome but rudimentary model kit design that was the full powered Gritman, but maybe not as high quality compared to the more refined and immaculate Psycho frame sculpts provided by Bandai as shown through the Gumpla line. But if I were to give some constructive criticism, the Anapods make Rogue Kaiser Gridman a hell to either hold or play with, but that may be a problem more so with me rather than that of the figure itself. And the newly added polycaps and the original Dino Xenon that what alleviates on the rigid posability found on full power Gridman comes at the cost of longevity as the legs become so loose that they fail to even stand up. But nothing a bit of super glue can't handle. When observing the assortment of accessories that Rogue Kaiser Gridman was provided with, let's just say it's an improvement over the previous Gridman and Goldburn combo. The first assortment are the hands accompanied by Dino Xenon, which aid in Gridman, pulling off a variety of poses. Firstly, there are your fists for the good old punch, roping hands in order for Gridman to get cancelled, large karate chopping hands for a good old neck slice, and the smaller chopping hands that can attach these unstable Kylo Ren-esque blades, perfect for slicing and dicing hot Styles. Then there are a dual pair of hands that first being the groping hands that this time around forsake the round and human like fingers for one that happens to be more beast like with the thin girth alongside the talon like ends that make Gridman more akin to Wolverine. This is in addition to the holding hands that are more or less akin to those of full power Gridman which allows the pair to aid in Gridman wielding a very sulfur of arsenals. From Gridman Caliber found on the original full power Gridman and makes Gridman here a formidable foe in close quarters, this is in addition to the newly added arsenal. Talking about newly added weapons! And what you see here is Rogue Kaiser Gridman's newly adopted arsenal in which Dino Soldier was able to hook up with Goldburn's decapitated neck in which this Frankenstein of a weapon allows Gridman here to not only block incoming attacks, but also can be used as a spear or pole for offensive purposes. Added to Gridman's grip and gives him an edge over most singular mechs. When discussing the height Rogue Kaiser Gridman is able to reach, Gridman here reaches the stars in which he is able to surpass the big G and only being behind extraterrestrial entities. As Rogue Kaiser Gridman stands at 20 centimeters or 7.8 inches tall, here's Rogue Kaiser Gridman next to a dead girl, a physically disabled, the Holy Virgin, that's what she said, Gridman, full power Gridman, Big G, and an illegal immigrant. Build that wall. Build that wall. 
When looking at how Gritman poses, let's just say Gritman makes Godzilla look like a Figma figure. The head movement due to the shoulders is extremely limited. At least it can move up and down. A shoulder movement that is laughable, something I can't even do, hardly a bend, decent hand movement, an impressive wrist bend, waist movement that is mid, leg split. What leg split? Legs can lift pretty well. Pretty impressive knee bend, decent feet movement, the wings can move side to side, and the tail can only move up and down. But if Roe Kaiser Gritman, even with all his power and arsenals, gets his ass beaten, then there's one last ultimatum. So, another transformation. And here's Gritman's ultimate form in which, by combining with Big Goldman, Gritman is able to amplify his Fixer Beam to the extent that it can fix any hostiles that dare to engage Gritman. From the literal I can fix her, to nullifying atomic attacks. But after having a good look at this form, it's maybe a little too reminiscent of a particular franchise. I have. Come. So, here we are at the end. Universal Fighter Gritman and Big Goldburn, when combined into Rogue Kaiser Gritman, is a fantastic build in which the improvements found on Dyna Xenon, such as improved details and posability, were incorporated to the corporate build, which culminated in a form that not only has the awe-inspiring design, immaculate sculpt, the size that could rival even Kaiju's, a decent articulation, and the arsenals at its disposal. But not all is as good as it seems as certain places within the build is brittle, resulting in pieces falling off. A transformation sequence that depending on what kind of person you are, can be tiresome, and a limited range of posability compared to the likes of Van Dyke's Gunpla line and more or less akin to a kaiju. Maybe that was the point. The crucifix, on the other hand, is more or less what it looks like and would be a great accessory for churchgoers. But that said, I would still recommend Rokai's Gritman if you can get your hands on it, as this is still a worthy figure that shares the ranks among kaiju figures, and only behind the standards left by the Gumpo line regarding Bill. In doing so, I'm gonna give the Rokai's Gritman a ranking of a B plus.